Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a preview using RGB pixel lights. Um, to start, I want to show you something about how you open the sequencer. Previously, I've always opened it um, from the Windows icon um, by just scrolling down to Lightarama and selecting the sequencer, um, which this works fine if you're just wanting to create um, a preview or sequence. But if you wanted to actually control your lights, then um, it won't work this way. And you can check um, by going over here to um, control lights. Um, you can see that this little light bulb is not on, and that is because the comm listener is not running, um, which you can see that down here if it was, which it is not. So in order to have that running, we need to have um, open the sequencer from the control panel. So I'm just going to go back over here and go to Lightarama again. And instead of op opening the sequencer, I'm going to open the control panel. See the CP there. Um, now this says it's running in your tray. So I say OK, and now I can look over here and we have this little um, light bulb here. Um, and you can see the CL is running, um, which you can see up here it says LOR COM listener. Um, so that is just always running when you have the control panel running. So um, to run the sequencer, now you can just right click on this icon and just select sequencer. So now when we go over to control lights, um, we can see that little light bulb is on um, and you can control whether that is on or off here, um, but it, uh, you need that comm listener to be running in order for it to actually um, be able to control your lights. So um, it's a good idea to just always uh, run it from the um, control panel and have that running so that that comm listener can be running. But of course this tutorial is about making a preview, so let's get to it. So we're of course going to make our preview by going to previews and clicking on the plus. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set the background here to my house picture, um, which if you want um, reference on how to create your house picture to be the right size and crop it, you can see the um, making a preview for a traditional lights tutorial and I go over that there. Um, so for now I'm just going to add one prop. So just add item, create a new prop continue. Um, and of course now instead of it being traditional, we're going to click on the RGB tab to make it RGB lights. Um, and this time I'm just going to make um, select matrix horizontal rectangle. Um, we just have this row of lights here um, in a matrix. Um, and we can see it automatically incremented all of our unit numbers here, starting at 1 on down. Um, and if we change this to say a 5, and press enter, then it auto increments everything else to go after that, which is pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 5, um, since I'm going to add some more stuff later. Um, now I'm just going to call this yard matrix, and just click save, and now I'm going to resize it. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to add more, but for now I'm going to leave it like that, and I'm going to go ahead and make that a little darker so we can see it a little easier. And then I'm just going to call this entire display. Say save. And now I'm going to make a musical sequence again, um, which again you can do that there or by going to file. And this time I'm going to select galloping jingle bells and just click open. Um, and this time the existing, I'm going to use the preview that we just made, entire display, say create. And here we are, we can see this um, yard matrix we made, um, see it's already black, it's automatically added a motion effect row, and we can verify that by right clicking um, and clicking on add modify, and here we can see effects one is right there. So let's just see what, um, what kind of options we have, I'm just going to select um, a section here, and just right click and say insert motion effect um, and here you can mess around with some of the options here um, you can do pinwheel and look it just makes a nice little wheel there spinning um, we could do fireworks make it look like fireworks are bursting you can make it ripple um, you know you got all sorts of cool options here um, I personally like butterfly looks pretty cool um, so we can put that here, it's got a little preview of just that. Um, 
Now you see, in order to play it here, since I don't actually have lights hooked up to my computer right now, I'm going to go ahead and go to Control Lights and just uncheck that so that I can still preview it here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and need to save it. So I'm just going to save. And now let's see how that looks on the actual house. Hey! You got a cool effect there. Um, so I'm going to go back and edit the preview to add um, some trim around the uh, edge of the house and um, these two windows. So I'm going to go back to previews, click on entire display, and click on modify. And now I'm going to add a prop. And this time it's going to be a window. So of course it's RGB. Um, and for a window, I'm going to just select window frame. And here we can control the size, uh, the dimensions of our window. How, select how many nodes are on the top, bottom, and left and right. You'll have to go out and measure it um, for yourself to see what fits your windows. But what works for my window is to do 15 on the top and bottom and 10 in for the left and right. And here we've got the shape that about matches my window. Uh, and I'm going to leave the unit number at 1, and I'm just going to call this window 1. Whoops, 1. And save. And I don't want a window the size of my house, so I'm just going to resize that. Bloop. Put it on my window, and I'm just going to right click and copy and it's going to automatically make that window to as well as increment my unit number and just move that on over to my other window um, and now that's done so I'm going to go ahead and make a window group um, so I'll say add item create a new group uh, which will be both my windows and I'll make it a horizontal stack and I'll just call it windows and say save. So now we got that group. Now I'm going to add um, some trim, uh, which, whoops, um, the way this will work is to have the strings be long enough, there's going to be a controller in the middle here with two lines going out from it. So I'm going to make two trims. So I'll create a new prop, uh, of course, RGB, and this time it'll be lines connected with two segments. And I'm going to go ahead and change this unit ID to 3, so we don't have a conflict. And I'll call it Trim 1. Um, now I'll show you something with the starting location. I'll go ahead and leave that at left for now. And we can see when I click away, um, one of these has a little blue dot. It might be hard to see, but there's a blue dot on one of these sides. And the blue dot shows where um, it connects to the controller. So since we want the controller in the middle between the two, um, I want that line to be in the middle and then move this down like that. So now I'm going to add trim 2. Same idea. Uh, two segments, RGB, and I'm going to change the unit number to 4 so it's not conflicted. Um, same idea, I want the blue in the middle because that's where it connects and put it on the trim. Now, okay, now let's take a look at something that can be confusing, um, this starting location. So I'm going to double click, and um, right now the starting location is on the left. So what this means is you're telling the program where you want this little blue box to be on the sequencing grid. Um, so like in Superstar. So when you go to Superstar, you have all those boxes lined up as to where you're selecting the lights. So since I could orient this in any way, you have to tell it where you've put this blue box. So since the blue box is to the right of our string, um, I need to say starting location is right. And then we click Save. So for Trim 2, since that blue square there is on the left, um, starting location left is what we want. So that'll make it um, work how we expect when we sequence. So now we have the trim, so I'm just going to um, make a group, create a new group. Um, it'll include trim 1 and 2. It'll be a horizontal stack. Um, and I need to put trim 1 on top since it's ordered left to right and trim 1 is on the left. And I'm just going to call this trim. 
say save um, and now I'm going to make one more group for the entire display so create a new group and this time we'll call it entire display um, and this time it'll be a vertical stack since um, our yards on the bottom and remember uh, it says checked items should be ordered from bottom to top so what's on the bottom needs to be listed on top so since the the yard matrix is on bottom that needs to be listed on the top here so I'm going to select the yard matrix and use these arrows to move it on up um, and then the windows should be in between with the trim um, with the trims on top so we list it on bottom here so now we say uh, oh and select them all there we go put them all in our group and then say save and now we have our entire display so now I can save it and now it's added to um, our musical sequence here and we've got lots more options um, so I'm going to go ahead and select this and delete it because I don't want this only on my yard matrix so just right click and clear that um, I want it on the entire display so I'm going to select up to 8 seconds um, and do the same thing right click insert motion effect and now you can see here we've got that beautiful butterfly effect on everything at once on our trim windows and the yard matrix which I think is just beautiful so I say okay and now we can preview this. Just press play. Yeah, now we've got that going. So, um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add another motion effect row to my entire display. So right now I've got um, just effect one. So I'm going to right click and say add slash modify motion effect row. And I'm just going to say add row. So now we've got effects one and effects two. And say OK. Um, and now I'm going to use this to be the motion effect row and then this one to be my superstar effect row. So I'm going to select the first A seconds and right click and insert a superstar effect. Okay, so now we're in superstar um, and here you can see uh, it's a little bit small having both the visualization and the sequencing grid up here. Um, so if you'd like uh, there is this option in view to do floating windows which separates these into their own windows so you can make it um, bigger and then if you have multiple monitors which I do although you can't see it but I could move this over here and have it big on one monitor and then just have the sequencing grid over here um, so you can see it a little easier um, but I'll leave it here so that you can see what I'm doing and um, here we can see our, our grid with this top row corresponding to our trim um, and the next row is our windows so there's the first window and then the second window um, and they're next to each other because we because we selected the horizontal arrangement and then of course our matrix on the bottom um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a morph so I'm going to select the morph mode um, and here I'm going to do a morph across the entire display um, but I'm going to go ahead and change it to white so I'm just going to right click here and select white um, so then it'll be a little easier to see there we go um, and I'm going to make this happen uh, between two and four and a half seconds so that will correspond with the, the cello playing and then I'll just say add um, and let's take a look um, at that so I'll just say play eight seconds okay. so you can see that it um, did that morph across everything and it did one window and then the next window um, we could change that uh, if you wanted if you went back and changed the windows group to be uh, vertical then this um, they'd each be on their own line and then um, if this morph went across those windows would go at the same time depending on what you want in your sequence you can choose either way um, for this one I like them going one at a time so I'm gonna leave it in the horizontal arrangement you just have to decide which arrangement you want um, at the beginning you can't change your mind halfway because that will mess up what you've already sequenced since it changes the sequencing grid uh, but let's go ahead and close it and see how that looks um, on top of our motion effect um, there it goes and let's go ahead and preview that.
Okay, so you can see the white just went over... Let me stop that. So the white went over on top of the butterfly effect, which is really cool. Um, so that is how we create a preview using RGB pixels. I wish you luck and hope you have a superb day. Thank you.